Uh, I should say that um, normally uh, in the West, in the US for example, when I am speaking in recent years, I can speak in Russian because everybody is <laughs> <in> Russian. <laughs> so I can do Russian. <laughs> Nobody is Russian. No, I am only in English. I will accept you. <laughs> this is amazing. Last time I spoke at Novos, in the US. We were sitting and I said, well, maybe we'll do a seminar in Russian. <laughs> but then there was one student who doesn't understand Russian, so I had to be in English. Here, there is a one Russian resident. But due to this, we have less Russian in Moscow, so... <laughs> no, they were here yesterday, so yes. Like, Moscow is too. Anyway, so, uh, I, when I was much, I looked me I said that see, I don't have recent paper on Higgs bundles, so what do I do? So I offered him to speak on my recent paper with Anton Alexel, which is about co-joint orbits of a sort of group, or give a general talk about Higgs bundle in physics, and he said, oh, it's good to do Higgs bundle in physics, I don't want any co-joint orbits. <laughs> okay, so then I was not prepared for this talk, so I decided yesterday, I didn't come yesterday, I came for half time. So I wrote something, it turned out that see, my talk, which is Higgs bundle of physics, it doesn't need by the way abstract because it says everything in title. Turned out, as when I wrote it, uh, basically my encounters with Higgs bundles. No? <laughs> so if we assume that the I have a physicist, then it's almost the uh, correct title. Right? So I did the list, okay? How did I, uh, what happened in my life with Higgs bundles? How did this take about? But it's interesting actually. I found when I wrote this thing, that this talk can go forever. Mm -hmm. So you stop me anytime you are bored, or if 15 minutes later you are bored, you stop. Okay? But it drops. So actually everything started, I wanted to make th this kind of cables. 1980s, would be here. That shows how old I am. I put here 90s. 2000s. And 2010. Now, interestingly, there are exactly four blackboards on the in the row here. So it is very appropriate. But then I thought, but it can't be right, it is not right. So there is going to be something before. And I remember that everything started actually in the 60s when my teacher, Ludwig Feder, walked in in the bookshop. In St. Petersburg, when it was called Leningrad, and bought a book by Mikhnerovich. And he was interested in something called Jan Mill theory, and he understood that Jan Mill theory is a theory of connections in a principal G bound. So he immediately understood that there is mathematics about this, you know, principal bundles and so on. And then he wrote paper before. First of all, of course, he taught everybody that this is what it is, everyone was interested. So we had Milsori, and then he wrote two papers, one with Popov and another without Popov. And the second paper in 1969, he explained how to write, in his case it was pass integrals, but how to do integration when your system is a, what you guys would call symplectic reduction, or Hampton reduction. Supposing a manifold, there is some moment map which you it's mindful is symplectic, and then you have to reduce uh, with some set of three moment maps and how to integrate over this space. And this in physics called the constraint system, so Hamilton reduction. And then in the 70s it was discovered probably by Alan Weinstein, I mean by people. So. But if you read the Patel paper from 69, there is a, at the end, there is, it's, it's a first volume of journal called Theoretical Mathematical Physics, and at the end there is a comment. I'm trying to do something here, I was following Paul Dirac and so on, but Arnold told me how to say it properly in mathematics language, and there is a very beautiful one paragraph, what is this about? So my talk in the kind of sense it's like, will be about this kind of things, as we will see. So in the 80s, uh, important subject was something called instant talks, okay? These are self-dual Young Mills uh, fields. Basically, as I just said, if Young Mills field is a connection in the principal G bundle, 
you take the curvature, you take a Hodge star, and you say that this is uh, the Hodge star divides the space of two forms in two pieces, uh, and you take the self dual part around the self dual part. And it was Polyakov who introduced instantons in physics 1970s in order to understand. physics problem, it was, and uh, well, it turned out these atoms didn't explain it, but what Polyakov did, he understood that the quantum field theory uh, of these page fields or the inverse uh, fields, uh, you have to, when you do the integration over all uh, the unused fields, there is something called perturbity when you do some kind of expansion in the small parameter which is called common, and then there are no perturbative corrections, and those two perturbative connections uh, corrections come from instant law. So you have to integrate over all uh, in a completely or normalized space of instant um, They are characterized by fresh chain class and second chain class. You have to take all this, then you have to sum over those. I mean, it, about two hours ago we had some talk here where he had to sum over first the check and second chain class and back and etc. So he, that was inspiration from there. And in my personal life, so this is physics. And here it must have So Sergei Novikov and Andre Turin very much inspired me to work on, on finding describing moduli space of Okay? So it's actually an interesting story, it is something to do important to with Andre Turin, so I will probably speak about this tomorrow at the reception in the evening. But it's a really funny story. There was a bet involved and the I want the bet. <laughs> uh, so, at those days, uh, the life was like this. Uh, as I said, we could teach in mind. But first of all, when Polyakov did the instant talks, it was immediately Albert Schwartz and Atia Fischin and Zinger described the moduli space by just studying some index theory and so on. So they said how it should look, like, what is the dimension, and simple things was already at the Hitchin uh, thing. And uh, here in Russia, Andrei Schwartz. And Andrei Schwartz, by the way, was co-author with Polyakov on Isanton paper. So Isanton paper has uh, the line Polyakov, Schwartz, and Tsumkin. But it was Polyakov who was talking about confinement. Anyway, so I was inspired by these guys in mathematics. And the story ends, interestingly, by uh, with, with Simon Donaldson. Because when, when we want the bed and we constructed the modulized space of instantons for first non-trivial case that it was not known, and we, we kind of proved the theorem that modulized space is irrational. I didn't know what rational meant, what means rational manifold, but Turing explained to me the important that it was Riscarepian, it was uh, showing that its manifold is rational. And then uh, Donaldson was told by Atiyah that some Russians uh, describe more like space of instant that might be useful. So he started writing us letters, uh, saying that our paper had some not, not correct to calculate some amount of paper. So we would say feedback to the letter saying that no, you are making mistakes, and Andre Turing would help me this. Eventually, Simon gave up. This is about 1982. This is 1982-83. So he gave up and he said, well, this APH construction no more to be a and sent it, and we incorrectly, uh, and with the manuscript of this pack, uh, and our uh, guys in the second floor in uh, Stecklow in the Leningrad demanded that I give it to them. That was his manuscript about Donaldson. So, so this uh, Rockland's group did not know at that time that Donaldson did something, but they have heard that something Donaldson did. And I was the owner of the copy of this Donaldson first paper. So it's how it did. And as you see, this is 1983, and Russia was not that isolated. Okay, we had contacts with, with uh, so Atiyah and Donaldson and so on. So that was in those days. It's exactly in the 80s, Hitchin, in the middle of it, took instant arms, did something to it, and discovered what I think Carlos called Higgs bundles, 
Who called you fixed bundle? I think I was the one there. Huh? Why not fiction bundle? <laughs> anyway, so that's how it is. It came from Instatops. It's very important for people in this audience, everybody's working on fixed bundles. It came from Instatops. And you will see Instatops at the end will have effect on some properties of fixed bundles. Now, this is uh, actually, this period was wrong period in my view, at least in my life. Because my work on this was uh, studying properties of modularized space of instant ones, or the big one. And that was the wrong thing, because what Simon Donaldson did in his paper here, as explained to me many, many years after by Richard Romo, that he changed completely the mathematics. He said you don't have to study details of modular. You don't have to study If you want to study topology, you do something else, you integrate, you study. So basically Simon Donaldson was physicist. He, in our language now, it's called Donaldson with the server. He integrated our modularized space of instant ones. Right? And but that's all physicists do. They integrate our space. They don't like to study details of space. They they take integrals. So this was a wrong period for me because I was studying the properties of modularized space of instant ones. So the paper I wrote with Scarab in 1983 was in the journal called this basic academic now say Matematica, which was Shafari, which is basically a journal. Shafari was a editor, and then actually many years after it was Fadel, I think, was editor. But anyway, so a paper came out there, and it was all the formulas about what are the problems, how do we delete the bad part, how do we cut things out, and not very interesting by modern, modern development of this side. So now in the 90s, I was already in the United States. Now, the interesting thing is that it, in every decade I probably had one or two papers on this. I've, I was not working mostly on this thing. It just came and go. It would come and go in my life. Come and go. <coughs> so in the 90s, I moved to Yale from Princeton and I had I had been inspired by works of Waffa and Witten. So I'm putting physics part on the left and mathematics part on Waffa and Witten and Zyberg and Witten. And actually I had some kind of outlet a personal touch to it because these papers were written in summer of 1994. Exactly same summer, same week, I wrote a paper with Wafa on things that were on G2 and spin 7 manifolds. And I thought this was the most important thing, to study spin G2 or conformal theory uh, where the target phase manifolds are G2 and spin 7 holonomy. But these other guys came up with much better stuff. So I started, when I moved to Yale that same summer, I started thinking to, to do something about and explain s qualities that the Lava Witten had and the Iberian solution, the Zinodiabolic invariants, and so on. So uh, I was inspired in the mathematic side by work of Nakajima. Because uh, the Witten and Waffa told me that there is this beautiful construction of Nakajima, the representation of Kasmuti algebra, by studying uh, hacker correspondence. We had a lecture today, two hours ago, about that. Okay? So I'm very inspired, and I said, well, maybe now I learned the lesson here, and maybe we should integrate over the <laughs> of So Nakajima had quivers with this bucket. 18 chain construction, as we were explained today, are simplest possible quiver. Nakajima had what's called AD quiver. Now it's called probably Nakajima quivers. And this AD, because it comes from the ALE space, it's a Kronheimer Nakajima construction. You take C2, which is R4, divide by gamma, which is a discrete subgroup of SU2. There is a Mackay correspondence from, from this uh, gamma subgroup to the AD classification. Uh, of linking diagrams, and then there is construction of the Nakajima quivers, like the Kronheimer Nakajima quivers, which describe modulized space of instant parts of cell dual connections on, instead of case of ADHM, it was a S4 or R4 with a point identified as infinity. Nakajima's case was this. So you consider uh, uh, the principal bundle over this manifold, the singularized, of course, in the uh, principal line, that considers the cell dual connections, and they wrote this quiver, the Kajima quiver. The Kajima quiver. So I said, let's integrate over it. So uh, in this particular period, I, for I forgot to mention, so 90s, my work was with Karepin, who was 
at that time. Uh, so the story is very really very known, and so I can say more. So here, uh, I had great collaborators on this work. It was Lose, Nekrasso, and more. So the most papers were written in different collaborations, but and great more. So in this collaboration, we started integrating over moduli space of uh, Nakajima quivers. Now, interestingly, uh, first time, at least for me, uh, in a paper we wrote with Moore and Nikrasso, we decided that since, okay, now, as I said, this talk is uh, not for observers or so. I try to communicate how these things were developing in the thoughts. Uh, so, Nakajima fibers are linear hyperhair quotients. Okay? So, we have some spaces, homomorphism between spaces, and you have quadratic equations. And I, I mean, previous talk had those equations, I don't want to repeat it. And there are two types of equations. In, in, the, in the previous talk, uh, the, the complex equation was, was called the relation, and the real one was because it is a moment map. But in, in principle, there are three moment maps complex and the real. So it's a hyperkähler reduction, hyperkähler motion. And we decided to take the Hitchens case, fixed bundle, which is also linear hyperkähler motion, but infinite dimensional, and put it there. So instead of, okay, we do integrate our complex space of Nakajima, any linear hypercalor portion, particular example of each. So we integrate it over. So we wrote some formulas. And we wrote a paper called Integrating Over Higgs Branch. Higgs Branch because after Carlos, physicists also start calling something the Higgs Branch, which I'm sorry, I don't know how it came up. So some, some, some nice papers, and uh, uh, this is second topic in Actis. They were talking about the Higgs uh, bundle, uh, that Higgs boson for decades. That's your that mistake, Carlos. <laughs> you should not have called it Higgs bundle, because it has nothing to do with Higgs boson. Uh, sorry. Uh, actually, the Higgs <laughs> paper, the, equation, the equations are pretty similar, actually. I will explain now why it is not. I mean, OK. Of course, I'm not this, is, this, so. will be, this will be part of the talk, actually. It's not okay, so what we call Higgs branch is everything which is not a Coulomb branch. A Coulomb branch is where the H field lives, right? So matter sector, we call it Higgs branch. In that sense, you're right. If it's a matter and Higgs, Higgs boson is a matter and so on, it's not a gauge field, yeah, you're right in that sense. But from the other side, because... But that was Hitchin, I mean Hitchin. No, but he comes from it, it comes from the H field. It comes from the original one that Hitchin did. I will explain in a moment. I mean, my desire of this talk, actually. No, no, it's what Hitchin said was that the one that comes from instantons is the same type of a thing as the one that comes from Higgs paper. Okay, first of all, very important difference is the Higgs field is supposed to be scalar. It is not a one form. Uh, That's important. That's no, important. actually, no. no. Uh, Higgs in his paper says you can take any associated bundle but that's, that's, actually. that's yeah. not the one that experimentally gets measured. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to argue. I will get to you. I will get to you. No, I mean, sorry. I, actually, I don't know what I am. My degree is from mathematics. All my degrees are in mathematics. It's like all But I work in physics problems. You know? At the same time, there are mathematicians who actually came from physics and become mathematicians. I don't want to argue with them. But the fact is that this Higgs bundle turned out extremely important thing in everything. Okay? So that's my point. That doesn't matter what we call it. So in 2000, eventually, it became possible. So here influences in physics came from Kapusin and Witten. And in mathematics from geometric regulants. And Bellison and Greenfeld and so on. And there is also a story about this in my life, which was at the, when Kapuski and Witter were here, I'm sure about 2004 or something. Uh, Adam Gerasmo and I immediately started discussing what's going on because Higgs bundles appeared here, actually, Hitchin systems.
and here and here, of course, both ways. Uh, so Anton went and read uh, Anton Grasmov, that my paper was moved in the class of 10 years before, so this paper was written. It was written in 94, but probably we put on the archive in 97. So I went back to him and he said, well, you have done almost everything what is required there. I mean, why? So we just realized that this example of the kitchen system, Higgs bundles that we studied here, is exactly something that was, was important there. So Andrew Grasso and I wrote a paper when we revived interest uh, to those integrals. And then the Grasso, the Grasso by that time, in 2002, already using those integrals, actually did uh, the arrives as I would be to search. So we were very prepared to attack the general problem, how to see these connections that came from 80s and 90s into modern stuff discussed by the sources I put here. That's how I was inspired. And, and I want to talk about it, because this led to something called, uh, well, many things, but in particular, Uh, what is now called beta gauge correspondence, and what, as I understand from uh, Andrei Lokunikov, uh, going to mathematics with his papers, in his papers with Maury and others, maybe in this room, uh, stable envelope and something like that. So this actually came from, again, physics and becomes something in mathematics which I don't understand. I'm very sorry I cannot explain that. But this, this, this I want to explain in this talk briefly. And in 2010, tens, so this was also with Alexei Rossi. So we had paper in Grasso, Rossi, who is from Moscow actually, and myself, uh, which is connected to the previous talk. So this, we, we tried to see, uh, describe uh, this space of operas which appears in geometric language correspondence in terms of uh, calculation of partition function and those integrals from here. And uh, we discovered that in very special coordinates, which are look like complexification of the Fenton Leeson coordinates on moduli space of complex flat connections, you can write generating function of operas, which is central object here, uh, in terms of the gauge term, in terms of those integrals. So there is a in special coordinates, as you know, the space of operas is Lagrangian submanifold in local systems, you mathematicians call it, moduli space complex of connection. It's a Lagrangian submanifold. So in every coordinate system that the local coordinate system in with, there has to be a graph which describes this Lagrangian submanifold, which is generating function. So we found the coordinate system, which as I said is uh, similar to complexification of and Nissen coordinates, for SN2 of course, uh, in which the genetic function is basically the, derived from uh, 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 the gauge cell. So one thing, so the hybrid solution, so the genetic function over there. So basically you can discuss, and then you can quantize it. It's a very interesting subject. So this is the In 2010, I find only one problem in my life which is connected to the Higgs problem. And I'm ashamed that I could not do anything good with it. Which was Carla Simpson had a paper long ago about Higgs bundles in higher dimensions, right? So Carlos wrote an analog of uh, spectral cut, which he called spe spectral cover, right? So it is given, I mean, it, 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 as you know very well, the spectral cover is, is a, it has the same dimension as the Riemann surface itself in the case of uh, Riemann surface, but it sits as a Lagrangian somebody for the contagion bar. So what Carlos did, also the spectral cover, is a half dimension of the cotagen bundle, which is the same as dimension of the space itself, and he wrote some equations. And I badly wanted to quantize those things, right? But equations that Carlos wrote, when I look at it, at least to me looks like complicated over determined, something like that. So I wrote it, those equations, in the tangent bundle, and it turned out it's almost identical to the, what Hitchin did in the case of uh, determinant formula in the case of Riemann surface. But unfortunately, in tang tangent bundle, is not symplectic, so I cannot quantize it, so I stopped there. So first I simplified those equations 
uh, that Carlos wrote, I think we, we call it fiberized duality. So you do fiberized duality and something which is written in cotangent bundle, you write in tangent bundles, and it's determinate formula, exactly similar to, to what Hitchin did for Hitchin's system. So this is a Simps I call it Simpson Simpson's integrable systems. Uh, but as I said, only what I managed here is a determinant formula in tangent bundle, but no quantization. After this, Gerasimov and I, this is the work with Gerasimov. After this, Gerasimov and I had a long argument with Maxim Kantsevich. He said, oh, maybe this is useless. Why would you do that? And then we realized that the correct topic to discuss for next decade would be quantum field theories or quantum mechanics which have no Lagrangian description. So there should not be, it's not necessary for quantum mechanics to quantize symplectic manifold. Because if you have a symplectic manifold, then you have functionally, there is always Lagrangian. Because if you have symplectic manifold, according to Darbo, there are local Darbo coordinates, so you can introduce one time coordinate, have a function, you can write Lagrangian. The point is, it's not every quantum mechanical system actually has uh, symplectic form of double coordinates. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to have. Only thing is required uh, to have a Schrodinger equation input. So this, this is very much digress, and I will not talk about that. But now I want to cover this stuff. It takes a long time. It's not a joke. I mean, I, I just sketched what is this about. So I want to now pick one example or two and show why how, how powerful this thing is. So first thing I will do, I will write the general formula of the intersection, of, let's say, volume for the linear hypercolor induction. So some general formula which physicists like to use, and simplest case was a modelized space of flat connection studied by Witten, but this is really a very simple one. In case of flat connections, it's just symplectic reduction. Uh, if it's a Higgs bundle, then it's hypercolor reduction. So let's write the general formula first, and I show the how powerful things can be said. Okay. Is it too general or is it kind of? Is it entertaining? <laughs> That's my job, to, not to bore the audience. <laughs> I'm going to speak a lot about this. This is so funny story. I mean, someone who will not be there tomorrow in Andre Turing's memorial reception will miss something. This is really funny. I hope Norica will be there. Simple question volumes. If manifold is symplectic and a complex symplectic manifold, let's say X, there is no problem. So you take maximal power of symplectic form, whatever power it is, and integrate over X. Okay? Not a big deal. But suppose now you will have a uh, manifold with three symplectic structures. It's, it's a case of this one. So we have omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. Sometimes we like to write <coughs> omega c and omega r because you take omega 1 plus l, omega 2 and omega c. Omega 3 and omega r. And you, your manifold is, let's call it y. Yeah, and you have three moment max. Mu, c, and mu r. Okay? And now suppose your manifold is defined as mu inverse of some orbit of point u in the Lie algebra, which is generated by <coughs> those three u is g, in g star, divided by the group action generated by this moment man. So similarly, you can write this as mu inverse of that point u over stabilizer of you. Right? How do we write the volume in this case? Which, which mu? There are C of them, right? So let's write mu C and mu R. So you pick, you, you have, everything is coming triples, right? So you take mu C equals U C and mu R equals U R, where U's are living in the complex. So U is the, the direction of U C and U R. Right. 
Okay, so how do you write the volume? So what you actually, it's not even volume, suppose you have a function on y, suppose f is function over y, and it has smooth extension you over you don't have a So the equations are like mu c is in the real right? It takes a value of the other. So you write it. mu c equals mu c. There's a moment with respect to <coughs> omega c. But the complex, the Lie algebra that is there, G, is it real Lie or no? No, no, complex. It's, complex. Ah. It's, it's, a, it's a complex Lie algebra. Okay, so what I want to say, yes, uh, so I want to write the Lie, I want to extend F from Y to X upstairs before reduction, okay, and I write an integral, the average of F being f, which is lift of it with a smooth extension, arbitrary smooth extension over x times exponential, and now it's very important, phi, I explain everything, mu minus u, all three of them, times volume of x, times flat measure where phi lives in this dual to the algebra. Okay? Phi should be in the algebra. It's mu and mu. Yeah, so it's the algebra. Sorry, phi is the algebra. Now, funny thing is that this formula is in general correct, but if you start thinking about it, <coughs> so this actually is a real algebra times probably I have to say R3, right? There are three of them. That's the real. There are three, there are three files. Because for each moment map, there are three moment maps for each identified. So let's write this to each like this. But then G is the real real. Yeah. G is a real real algebra, but there are three of three of them. So I can say that there is a combination is complexified and there is a circle. There are three of them. It's very important. But now I want to write the formula that Fade would write. For the cyclical, it's very important. This is kind of version of the Fadel Popo physics version of all physics, and this formula was in my paper with Greg and Nikita. So we have to write down this same f for the hyperbolic particular case as integral of f, which is extension, exponential of certain thing, let's call it capital big F, which depends on point on x upstairs, depends on phi, which is z phi living in this series, three of this series. And what's what the problem called the ghosts, C and C bar. So C and C bar live in the algebra, right? In, in the same representation. So is this the same phi, the D phi? Is it the same? Yeah. So there are three of them. Is, is, is it the same phi as it appears in the picture? Yes, it's the same one. So the, uh, mm -hmm. another form. Another Did I write something wrong? No, you just use another form. You no, use, okay, the, you use another phi there. Is that the phi? Sorry. That's not the problem. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm sitting on this lecture, so I also get yeah, yes. I am, I am, so. so what Fade Popo would write, they would write this kind of integrals over, so now this integral is x tensor g star times 3r and times, I think the mathematicians call it, uh, so, there is a Berezinian here. This, this, this CNC bar are Grassmann variables. So I have to write a mega integration over Grassmann variables, CNC bar, which live in a real complexification of real. Okay? Now the question is what is this object? How do I construct it? And this is a key point in everything later. So this f is equal sum, it's very similar to there, of a equals 1 to 3. Phi A, now I think I put phi A up there, phi A with mu A minus U A. So this is a, a, a <coughs> bracket between the algebra and its dual, plus sum alpha, beta, gamma from 1 to 3, sum A, B from 1 to dimension of this group, stabilizer group of the elements U, C, and U, R, times time, C, 
C bar A, so C comes also as three of them. There are three A's. Sorry, C comes as many as this dimension is correct. Mm -hmm. Then there is a Poisson bracket, only mu alpha with mu beta, A, B, calculated in a gamma complex symplectic form. So I can pick any symplectic form, omega 1, omega 2, or omega 3. I still have three moments left. And in that symplectic form, I can calculate the bracket between those moment maps. So I get something I call bracket of alpha beta in a gamma complex structure, right? Times CB, again, this is this cost, times epsilon alpha beta gamma. So this formula is invariant under the rotation SO3 between <coughs> three symplectic structures I pick. So what I'm saying is that if I would pick one symplectic structure, write that formula, it would not be invariant under the rotation of those. So this is invariant formula. Now from this formula, it turns out, this is general formula, from which you can consider all the cases I just described. So for example, let's do the Higgs bundle. Higgs bundle is infinite dimensional version of the air, right? <coughs> So I have to pick one symplectic form. Let's say I pick the one that uh, in which the Hitchin described integrable system. What, what is that one? I, I symplectic structure, right? When a bar and phi are homomorphic coordinates. Okay, let's pick that one. Symplectic structure a where homomorphic variables are a and phi in the case of Hitchin. And write the volume of uh, modulus for this in this C variant form that I just said, because once I write in one, then I, I have to rotate it by the source. So formula comes up. You integrate over the same analog of these things for Higgs bundle. It's easy to write. There's no big thing. Right? <coughs> Only question is, what is ZF? Right? So ZF, in the case of Higgs bundle, is equal integral over sigma dz dz bar. Now, I have a trace, a killing form, defined by a killing form, because I'm in a joint representative, it's a principal bundle. Everything lives in the principal bundle, so there is no notion of trace. I write i times phi zero. This phi zero is one of those phi's. There are three of them, as we know. But now it's, uh, uh, how to say that? It lives in a dual space. This will be a Hitchin equation. This will be what we call the Hitchin equation, right? So there is a dual, which I call phi, all together will be two form because Hitchin equation is a two form. It's a curvature of connection, right, which is a two form. If I multiply something, it has to be a zero form in a joint representation. Then I can take trace, right? And then I can integrate two form over the signal. That's what I will do. I write phi zero times curvature of the gauge field minus phi phi. Right? This is uh, what real moment time is. Then there will be similar thing. Trace. Phi phi is star. Well, I write this way. So let's write phi z commutator with phi z bar. I pick the complex structure phi. But I think that has to be plus. I forgot. Then there is a phi plus which will multiply double z phi z bar. And then there has to be trace of phi mic because I have to write double moment mic. Nabla z bar times phi z. So this is mu c. This is mu c bar, right? And this is mu r. So I have to write all of them. Each of them will come with phi. What I was emphasizing that this thing, these two guys are one one form. This is one one form. Then this guy has to be zero form in a joint representation. Okay. So for three, uh, three equations in a Hitchin case, I have three zero forms which multiply moment maps. These are these guys. And then I have to write an analog of this. And believe you or not, it's not difficult to write. Plus so on. Now, the important thing is that this, if I would do like that, because of original setup, the moduli space would be non-compact and I'm in charge. 
In the case of Wittenberg, he studied the long lines of flood connections. These guys were not there. This was not there. Only this was this. Okay, to the compact space, no problem. It took unitary group. In our case, it would be a problem because physicists. I mean, let's say one one of the forms that physicists would like to look at. Let's think about fusion modulized studies, fixed bundle modulized studies, as a <coughs> complexified portion, right? So I take uh, mu inverse C divided by uh, complexified group. Okay? I can think about this like this. Then the problem is that this will be a salary which will be invariant under gauge transformations of complex groups. So I have a connection which is a complex, which you I call A1, uh, A plus I5. I think. People like to put here some zeta, but let's, let's pick this one, k e plus i phi, right? And then the gauge group would be g inverse complexify a complex, complex one, dc plus g inverse dc. So everything is complexified. The action of the gauge group is with complex, <coughs> complex gc. So physicists don't like that. They would say, let's gauge fix, let's do the fatal of construction, which eliminates and reduces the uh, gauge symmetry from to, the, to its real part, real, real section, like you talk about. Right. How do we do? This guy plus that guy. So in that case, we have a complex connection. Right? We have equation FAC equals 0 divided by GC. And this guy has a real imaginary part. Imaginary part is a sum of two, real, of two complex momentum. This plus this. So what you do, you take their difference as a gauge fixing condition, right? Then your symmetry will be on the unitary group, on the real group. So what you do, you put the gauge condition, mu c minus mu c bar <coughs> equals zero. So now you have all three equations, because the imaginary part here is its sum, and the u puts the condition is difference. Only symmetry now we have a real group, unitary group. So this way, Fadel Popov would actually derive this formula which I wrote, because now everything is gauge fit, and this is invariant only under a unitary group. But there is a problem of non-compactness exactly because of that complex direction. So what you remember now, the speech you told you, there is a C direction on the model I space. Right? You take phi times lambda phi and phi bar times lambda inverse times phi bar. So what you do, you say, okay, we fix our problem by taking integral which is equivalent with c times integral phi z, which phi z bar trace. I think you guys call this uh, norm, right? Teaching norm. Yeah, that's the other Kitchen function. So you take it, it doesn't break any symmetry. It's six star invariant, right? So it empty. Now what happens is that your integral, which was written here, which is general one, acquires the Gaussian dumping if c is positive or negative, whatever. An integral will converge. <coughs> but if c equals zero, an integral will diverge. Right? So this way, Moore make us have died the insufficient system and wrote the following formula. So we calculated this integral by properly fixing for the problem. So this is what we call, uh, mathematically what we do, it would be called equivariant volume. Because in this case, uh, some whatever symmetry doesn't square to zero but squares up to this direction. And so this will be what we call it. But we got the answer. But the volume equals, or any actually average of every function, is equal to sum over something that's called the beta equation of certain thing to the power g minus 1, where g is the genus of Riemann centers. And if you would now deform any of the, if you would calculate this function to be, in the case of Kitchen, exponential of minus Casimir's constructed out of the phi, in the SC2 case it's only phi square, right? There is no other one. So you, what I'm saying is that you can write functions, this phi, 
is a zero form. Huh? You can deform this integral by functions of that zero form. And this zero form is in real algebra value of this time. So you have to calculate traces of the powers of this part. And you can deform it with that. And that will correspond to differential forms. So there is a deformation of this thing. So you can derive formula exponential minus integral of polynomials of phi is it is it bar. After integration theory, no one's going to <coughs> So, polynomials of lambda, let's put it equal in lambda, and sum here, the better equation is like this. There is an equation of la on lambda which comes from one function I call W of phi, and this equation looks like dW, uh, lambda, sorry, W of lambda dw d lambda i equals 2 pi i and i. So there is an equation on exactly as many lambdas as your gauge group was. So there are lambda living in a carton of a group which was in the Higgin phase in the, well, we had the gauge group, right? We had some g bundle, and that's a g. And lambda lives in a carton. And then you have an equation that these cartan elements are restricted with one critical points of one function by this equation, where x are integers. So you have integers and i, and i goes from one to dimension of the age <coughs> group. And that's an answer. Now with this equation, what is w? So what I'm saying is there is a sum over critical points of one function w, and this is an integral over the moduli space of Higgs bundles reduced to summation over some finite dimension. Oh. So there is a, there are finite many lambdas, but this equation has infinitely many solutions. Very important. And they are labeled by a set of integers, which I call ni. For any ni, there is a lambda. You give me your beloved ni, I find your lambda. So then the sum over these lambdas is the same as sum over the, these elements. <laughs> this uh, in particular case I'm discussing, this is a better equation of nonlinear Schrodinger integrable system. So somehow, integral of moduli space of Higgs bundles is reduced to sum over better equations of some known integrable system. So this is the first time appearance. This is not the same integrable system what we call Hitchin. It's a completely different integrable system. So Hitchin defined integrable system using the Higgs bundle, but this is not an integrable system for which the beta equation is written. And that's extremely important. Two integrable systems come into picture. One that Hitchin defined, another this one. Now then you can ask question. Well, I, I will tell questions now about this. Did, did I I'm very roughly explain what I just did. I did not say. What integrable system it was, I can say. I mean, so W just depends on G. Excuse me? W just depends on G. W depends on a group and n variables, lambda 1, lambda n, where n is a random system. I can give you a formula for this, actually. <coughs> well, then W has a name, actually. W of lambda. is a Young's function, Young Young function. The same Young who invented Young wheels, and this is, I think, his nephew. I'm, I'm not sure 100%. There are two Young's, Young Young function. For the integrable system, which is like that, you take a circle, take a coordinate on a circle called x, you have many, many of those, x1 and so on, xn, and you write the differential operator d over dxi squared plus c times delta function of xi minus xj sum over i multiple j sum over i from 1 to n so you have n particles <coughs> and this is your Schrodinger operator and you ask the question of spectrum of this of this Schrodinger operator which is L2 uh, square integrable spectrum 
and turns out the spectral spectrum of this particular Schrodinger operator is labeled by N and R plus, which satisfies that equation. Same equation that I wrote. So in mathematics, it is called this is connected to double affi Hecken algebra at the generation because double affine would have two parameters and this has only one. And this is a language of Vanichary Nikkei magic. Anyway, so this is the first appearance of the integrable system, which is not the same one as Hitchin had. Now another problem. How much time I have actually? I'm out of time. Six minutes. Six minutes. Okay, well, fine. fine. It's good, good, good. So uh, now the message here is like this. We want to integrate something, so I go. I'm very sorry if it was a little messy in the middle, but uh, the logic is like this. We have a model of space, right? We know how to describe it. This entire conference wrote how many times I don't know this x bundle of equations. I, 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 I decided I should not write it. <laughs> okay. So we have that model of space. It's not compact. We want to calculate the average of some function over that model of space. So we have function on that. We know how to write this model of space as hypercalor quotient. So we need the formula for general hypercalor quotient, how to integrate over that modular space in an intelligent way. And this is general formula, which leads to eventually to something <coughs> with formalism and so on, all this machinery comes in. But in case of Higgs bundle, concretely, because of this direction, we are saved by the equivariance that we can add the teaching functional to the action and preserve the C-star symmetry. So what we will get, the answer eventually will depend on this parameter C, but obviously it will depend very mildly because W depends on C, but only what matters whether C is 0, 1, or infinity, because you can rescale. You can rescale C by rescaling lambdas, nothing will change. It's a homogeneous function. So C actually is a 0, 1 or infinity. It doesn't matter anything. Is this clear what I'm saying? Properties of this equation are same for any C which is not 0 and infinity. If it's 0 or infinity, it's a different sum. For example, when it's infinity, everything reduces to integral moduli space of flat connections of our unitary group because if C goes to infinity, this guy is not contribute, only phi or zero will contribute, this drops out. Right? And you end up with a usual F A equals zero, which is a flat connection for the entire case. And then everything is done. If C equals zero, if it's a C equals zero, we are integrating over moduli space of complex. That connections without any regulator, and you end up studying the representations of the complexified group, and then it's a problem. What is the role of this C in computing the volume? <laughs> in in mass mass the physically, volume. it's a regulator. You are regulating it. Right? Your integral diverges, so you introduce the most symmetric regulator, right? Physically, mathematically, you consider certain whatever cohomology of some Q, which tau squares not to zero. When you write, you no, know, you have this anti-commuting variable, so this. Thing. Quick does square to zero, but up to the lead derivative with C, C times lead derivative along the C direction. So everything will be invariant only if you act on the C star invariant functions. So that's what we would call equivariance, right? It's not invariant, but Q squares to C times uh, transformation from C star. And the final result depends on this C or uh, it depends on the C, but as I said. It is a function of C, and it's the same answer. If C is not equal to zero or infinity, answer is same. Okay. Because it's a scale, scale variable, it just rescales it, right? But if C equals zero or infinity, this thing change. Now, exactly the same thing is here. If C equals zero or infinity, it's a completely different system. You know, if C equal to zero, we are talking about simple Schrodinger operator on a circle. The solution is a uh, representation of the group SOM, SOM, right? But if C is infinity, it's completely different, so, and so on. <coughs> the same thing happens there. But the interesting thing is how the Hitchin system, Hitchin integrable system, appears. so this is not a Hitchin integrable system. It's some other integrable system. So what the Grasso and I managed to do, and I'm sorry, I'm giving this lecture, I feel like the Oscar. <laughs> so what we managed to do is to take your other examples, and instead of Higgs bundle to be in a joint representation, what you call a Higgs bundle normally, as you know very well, and I think you have worked on it, you can consider the section of any bundle. 
So you take G bundle, take associated vector bundle, whatever you want. Right? And you can write the kitchen equation for Z. <coughs> and it turns out you do exactly what we did for that thing, and you get other integrable system. That's not generally like a cable. It depends on what sort of you know, situation, what sort of okay. so, it is. so it will be a killer reduction. Yeah. It will be killed, but it still, still works. works. Yeah. It still works. So what you do, what we we'll do is like, we write as a, what's called BPS equation, which is like hyperkiller, and then we scale down something called superpotential, so then our equation becomes moment map equals the moment map for the other sections, you know, you write uh, F equals in terms of the quadratic combination of the other guys, mm -hmm. right, and then you do it. And you still calculate it, and interestingly, you get other integrable systems, no need for, for example, you can hook up the situation when, okay, let me give you sections. Let, let's take those guys, other guys. So we take six Higgs field, like usually, five, and then we add N, some number, let's say I call it NF, fundamental representations. So phi is in a joint representation. Let's add this many fundamental. And then add exactly this many anti-fundamental. So now out of it, you can construct the moment map, the commutator of product of this, not commutator anymore, right? And add to the heat number, right, probably read, right? and the repeat it. So what you will get, you will get again better equation, but something called x, 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 in chain. So this is not a complicated integrable system. So what the heat and I managed was that you give me what integrable system you want to do, I will consider the deformation with other sections of heat bundle, and I will get that my answer will be sum over the better equations for that. So it turned out that there is a basically one-to-one -one correspondence. There is a one uh, smart word I have to add here. So everything I wrote here in physics comes like this. Ed Whittier long ago, when he tried to do the Donaldson theory, invented something called topological quantum field theories. He described some nice cohomological, as I would say, quantum field theories. And then there was a statement there that if you are cal calculating an index, which is supersymmetric for a partition function, or called Witten index, so there is something called Witten index, which is trace minus 1 to the f exponential of minus beta h plus some operators, which is important thing is that it's integrated, there is something called Fermi number, they calculate this way, and this is an Hamiltonian of your system. And we can show that this trace actually has contribution only from ground state. So this trace is the same as trace minus 1 to the f, but only in vacuum sector, when vacuum, when h equals zero. So Ed shows that this particular trace in any quantum field theory with the mass gap and so on reduces to the trace of minus 1 only in the vacuum sector. In a sector, h equals zero. So h of quantum state equals zero. This is called a vacuum sector. So basically what he claimed that every positive, well, whatever, if you are h more than zero, for every bosonic one, when f equals zero, there is a fermionic one which has the same Hamiltonian number and cancels. So when h is positive, there is a cancellation between sides, like in usually index L. And when h is zero, there is no cancellation you have to help. Right? So what happens is the, the, these quantum field theories when have this vacuum sector, <coughs> And what I wrote here, the topological quantum field theory, describes vacuum sector of some very well-known supersymmetric gauge theory. So what I can basically take some nice supersymmetric gauge theory and try to build it in such a way that vacuum sector will describe Higgs bundle with that perturbation of the other, other sections, not only the, the adjoint representation. And this game can be played, actually, and they have names. These are called two-dimensional A equals two supersymmetric neon wheel theory with a Higgs branch and a mask. Okay? Basically there is some this way. Now just to finish because I have no time left. Something really funny happens when you go and try to ask question, what about Hitchin integrable system that Higgs bundle describes? Right? You guys know very well that Higgs bundle, this, uh, the moduli space of Higgs bundle is a holomorphic symplectic manifold with symplectic forms and it's fiber in the isymplectic structure, which was A bar and phi, somewhere I wrote here, over the base, uh, with the fibers being abelian, polarized abelian variables, right? So we have here uh, M, 
with big homomorphic structures A bar and phi, phi bar C bar and phi Z, and phi bar over B, which is in some complex space, with phi bar being a very polarized, polarized abelian varieties. And as such, this integrable system comes with something which is called the prepotential. Now, notion of prepotential that I need here, just again, I, I too many try to finish. It comes simply from the fact that I just said this was polarized abelian variant, so it's a complex torus, which means I have A cycles and the B cycles. Right? It was complex. Which means that I can take the two fold here, since fibers are Lagrangian, they are exact forms, I can take the inverse and integrate one form over the fiber. So let's call it one form, d theta equals omega, which is this omega, and integrate theta over a cycles and integrate theta over b cycle. This is a function on the base, right? Because I integrate in one form over the fiber. So I get some function on the base. This is also a function on the base. Right? Let's call it AI and call it AI dual. Statement is simple. They are both exactly as many as dimension of a base. Which means that they cannot be independent coordinates on the base. They have to depend on each other. I cannot have an n-dimensional complex space to an independent uh, complex coordinate. They have to be dependent. And the interesting fact is that this is, I think, Rondon Happy probably gave a lecture or so. So if you sum DA I wedge DA I dual over from I equals 1 to N, where N is a half a dimension of modular space, it will vanish. This is analog of the Riemann bilinear identity of that function. So, so this guy vanishes, which means that the B cycles are expressed in terms of A cycles with some potential. So AI dual has to be related to AI with some potential which is more neuromorphic function on the base. Okay. So this prepotential comes with the Hitchin system. So Hitchin system comes with particular prepotential. Now turns out that was discovered in Moscow by the way by my friends who are here uh, that the algorithm solution of the two dimensional four dimensional young server with eight supercharges is described in terms of this prepotential. So when they, as they identify is that the, there are many Hitchin integrable systems, they identify Hitchin integrable system which has a prepotential exactly coinciding with something they have written with wrote when they wrote their solution with actually spectral car. Because I've never written wrote spectral car, they wrote prepotential. So the people Gorski and people who are here, Gorski and others, discovered uh, that uh, original Zeibert-Witten solution for a particular model was related to a Hitchin system, which is the generation of a Hitchin system on a torus with one puncture at some degeneration. This, that integrable system called periodic torus. Periodic torus integrable system. They are so what happens that see when Nikita and I did the and this kind of integrals so on moduli space and, and wrote the uh, theory in four dimensions for that kind of Zyberg written theory. You have there two parameters. Instead of C, which was one parameter, you have two parameters because moduli space of instantons, which are interested in case of four dimensions, has a SO4 invariant, right? Because of ta tangent spaces are four. So you can SO4 invariant, and SO, so you can do equivariant volume description with U1 square, which SO4 has two U1 subgroups. SO4 is S2 times SC2. So each of them has its equivalent U1 subgroup. So you do like that, and you can answer with two, S, two, two parameters, epsilon, which were introduced in the paper by Mohan Kida and myself. So when we did the formation of that very good theory, with one epsilon, they put another epsilon to zero, we discovered that this gives the answer uh, that I will with the prepotential with the form one epsilon actually is a generating function of moduli space of operas in geometric language squares. So it's a long story. What I'm saying is that it's amazing how this goes in different places. So you can go that way, you can go this way. So my introduction was I just said that there were many topics and each topic something happened. But the key 
think was this uh, understanding what you have to think about. And this, well, I'm actually grateful to the country here in Russia where I was educated, where most important thing was to teach you how to have a good text. What is a good text? What kind of questions to be interested in? And this culture here was amazing. I mean, every time I would pick a problem, I, I could just have seen, I was 20 year old, I had to write letters to Donaldson because we picked the right problem and he was the big right thing. And then he wrote 10 years later again, same thing. So we were lucky that Nikita, uh, Greg and I started asking hard questions in 1994, how to understand Nakajima, because I didn't even get to Nakajima. But you can write these formulas for Nakajima varieties and so on, and you get some interesting answers there for anything. Almost every question discussed in on this conference, I was sitting and I was saying, oh, I know it. This, for this case, I know the answer of quantum fields, which gives the answer. Right? I'm not studying details of modulized space. I actually can't tell you very little about the modulized space itself. That was my mistake when Novik told me I had to solve the APHM equation. If he would tell me to integrate the APHM equation, <laughs> maybe I would do it before Stanton. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes. Is there an easy relation between the yang yang function and the effective free potential? Why well, yang yang function comes out there? Okay. Okay. So is there no, is there an easy relation between the effective free potential and the yang yang function? In W there, yang yang function and what? And the effective so, free potential. The, the foreign point potential is a yang yang function that is the yang. for an integrable system of pitch. This was extremely important to discover. So what you do, you do F with two epsilons each epsilon for each SU2 in SO4. So it's a regularization I call integral from modulized space of itself. Once we get next this problem, and then what you do, send one of the epsilons to zero. And what happens is that this volume behaves, and it's very easy to explain why, as exponential of one over epsilon two times something, which depends on epsilon one. And then there are corrections in the positive powers of epsilon two. This is easy to explain. Because this 1 over epsilon 2 is equivalent volume of R2 in R4. You have two R2s, right, in R4, right? So when you do equivalent volume, what you do, equivalent volume is basically nothing more but exponential of minus epsilon 1 z modulized square 1 minus epsilon 2 modulized square of z2, dz1, dz2, dz1 bar, dz2 bar, right? So that's what happens when you talk it. So it's one over epsilon each time, right? One over epsilon one. What happens there when I extend epsilon two to zero, it's like I'm getting rid of one R2 in R4. So I have to get divergence exactly of volume of that thing. And that's one over epsilon two. And then there is something F. And that's a prepotential with epsilon one, which is interpreted when you exactly calculate it as H bar of quantization of Hitchin system. So what happens? that this geometric gradient correspondence, which tells you that some classical object in one holomorphic structure, which is J holomorphic structure, for Leibniz dual group, gives answer for quantum question in the original integrable system for the spectrum. That's the whole idea of geometric gradient. You have uh, showing your equation h psi equals e psi in a Hitchin integrable system in when h is some differential operator and so on. And you are asking how to describe spectromorphy, and geometric language tells you go to the dual group, language dual group, go to local systems, write down genetic function of that space of offers, you will have the answer for that. That was invented, by the way, by Scanning in the case of Toda uh, and uh, Toda Seori and Gaden, and he called it separation of variables. So these are cases of genus zero with n punctures, right, or genus one with one puncture. Exactly for this case, Bailey's not being very good to discuss. They would consider G more than one, right? But for these two cases I just said, Sklanin did separation of variables, basically did the Fourier transformation and then separated variables in the Fourier space and wrote equation, which is exactly the equation for operas, right? So what Nikita Rossell and I did, and I, I believe Nikita's title is like, he has a proof of our conjecture, the grassy roster of conjecture for tomorrow, what we did is that we explicitly constructed this W, this uh, prepotential with epsilon, in the gauge survey and showed that in the coordinates, special coordinates, and it's very nice, beautiful coordinates,
months actually. It can be, for SL2 it can be described, for SL2 it's generally very much more substantial cases. But for SL2 they are almost those that are discovered by uh, Okay, There, are these lo there is this um, volume that Lobachevsky calculated for polyhedral when you I just don't want to go there. So, so there are some nice calculations, dialogues, how we discuss dialogues. So those nice calculations actually end up, in the case we are interested, uh, with uh, giving the generating function of space of opera, something that uh, uh, would be considered holomorphic version of writing accessory parameters in Poincare uniformization server. So in, in that case, you write a well heterometric and you write accessory parameters, but nothing is holomorphic. Yeah, everything is homomorphic because each system is a homomorphic integral. Very sorry for if this late talk, are, but if you have any intuition, it's a difficult question. What is coming up in the 2020s? <laughs> well, as I said, I wanted excellent. I wanted very much to understand Simpson. You know, there is almost nothing I find in literature. What happens? Maybe Carlos will teach me. What happens when you go to Higgs bundle but over the surface, not over the complex car, right? And my understanding is, is my work with Gerasimo, when we wrote, you know, there is this formula of Simpson, how to write spectral cover in terms of some set of equations. Right? So I wanted that thing to be like a spectral car, so I could quantize, right? But those equations are kind of overdetermined, so we have to correctly understand them. So what I did with Gerasimo, I wrote it in a tangent space as a determinant of something simple, right? And then I wanted to quantize it, I got stuck. So after that, I started thinking that if I have to figure out how to do quantum mechanics when it is not described in terms of Hamiltonian, when there is no symplectic such, when, when I cannot say PQ dot minus HT, right? Because if I have that, then I have all this. But in case of Simpson, I cannot write it. Because nice equation of spectral cover turned out to be nice only in tangent states, not in conductance. Right? So I want to do it, so it led me, for me, to understand how to do the quantum field service, which have no Lagrangian description. And that's, I think, is the future. And for me, it's the future. But as you see, Higgs bundle will come probably again somehow, from somewhere. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. So many thanks for this inspiring lecture, I'm sure that tomorrow,